guys welcome back to our channel for bling your things my name is Shannon and today I'm going to show you how to make a tumbler with a leopard pattern that has like a swirl that goes around the cup and then for the base I'm going to do a honeycomb pattern in crystal so to prep the cup I have already done that by sanding you can use regular sandpaper, or if you don't have that, you can also use a nail file. You just wanna scuff it up enough so that the surface is not completely flat or that you're taking off any shine that's on there. Then after you've done that, you want to use rubbing alcohol to clean off any of the dust that is remaining on the cup. So you'll just do that, clean your cup off, get all of the dust off. Then for glue, we're going to use liquid fusion for this today. This is a clear adhesive that is heavy duty. It is recommended for it says it's best on porous, non-oily surfaces such as wood, stone, non-glazed ceramics, fabrics. Um, it can be used to adhere to non-porous surfaces when used on small projects. Apply, it says to apply low heat to aid in the drying process. That's not something that I'm going to do. It says always test for best results. Um, apply an even coat to clean, dry surfaces let dry for two to four hours and maximum hold after 24 hours for glue to completely cure. So after you finish your project, let the glue set for, let your whole project set for at least a day before you wash it. Then to apply, I'm going to use a five milliliter syringe and I'm just going to fill this with glue. So I'm not gonna put a whole lot in here. You can always add more. And then I just apply it like along the side so that it doesn't go all the way down. And then for, I'm going to use a blunt tip needle to apply. So you can, I generally use one of two sizes. So this pink one is a 20 gauge and the green one is 18. So it might be kind of hard to see, but you see how the 18 is a little bit bigger than the 20. So the smaller the gauge, the bigger the, the size of the needle. So for this type of glue, I like to use the bigger one. So I'm just gonna put this on the end and twist it on. And then, wait, well, hold on. Gonna put the plunger in and then push up to get out all of the air. And then when it gets to about, it's almost ready to come out, that's when I will put on the blunt tip needle. And then I'm just going to make sure that it's coming out and then clean off the edge. So then I'm gonna set this aside to for the spots for the leopard I'm going to use a vinyl to apply those this is a these spots are from a wrap that are available on our website blingyourthings.com this wrap fits perfectly on a 16 ounce acrylic tumbler to fit all the way around And so since I'm going to have the spots go around the cup in a diagonal pattern, I'm not gonna apply this whole thing to the cup, I'm just gonna use the spots 
um, and apply them where I want them to be. For rhinestones, I'm going to be using our glass diamond cut flat back rhinestones from, um, these are our, our rhinestones from our website, blingyourthings.com. So for the spots, I'm going to be using Jet in size SS16 and also SS10. And then I'm going to fill in kind of like the negative space for the spots with Sapphire. I'm also going to use size SS16 and size SS10. And then for the main part of the cup, I'm going to be doing a honeycomb pattern. And I'm going to be using mainly size SS16 and then SS10 for any spots that I need fillers. And also where if I have any spots where it doesn't fit perfectly um, to match up to the spots. I will post links to all the products used in our video today in the description down below. So to start off with, since I'm going to be doing a honeycomb pattern, one of the things that I like to do is kind of mark off my spaces throughout so that I don't end up with like roller coaster lines and that I keep my honeycomb pattern straight. So one of the things that I do is I will take a pencil and just random items, whatever you have that I can use to give my spacing so that it's going to be even. So I'm just going to place this is just a, a storage a storage bottle and I'm going to put that down on another surface and then I'm going to turn my cup so that I'm keeping my pencil straight and I'm just going to make a little mark the whole way around the cup. So if you can see that, I have like this perfectly straight little line right there. Then I'm going to add another one and do the same thing. So what this is going to do is this is going to help me gauge that my lines are straight as I proceed up the cup with my honeycomb pattern and then if there's any time where I start to deviate from this line I can make the corrections early before I get too far into the design before I start to notice it. So when you're doing a honeycomb pattern one of the most important things is to make sure that your lines are straight. So with this type of cup because it has this slight little lip right here, I'm actually going to start from the top and work from the top to the bottom. Because there's another little trick that I'll show you of, of why I do that. I can make sure that I keep this line completely straight by starting here compared to the bottom. And, then, and I'm going to start here. I'm just going to apply a line. You don't need a whole lot. You don't want the, the glue oozing out around the sides of the stones and it ends up clouding them, but you do want enough that it grabs the edge of the stones to help secure them, to help make sure that they're securely in place. and then wipe off the tip. So, then I will just start applying my stones. So this first line, you wanna make sure that it is completely straight and I want my stones to touch, but I don't want them to overlap. So now that I have those, I'm going to take my cup 
and I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to use the flat surface to push my stones till they all meet the edge and so that makes sure that they're all lined up at the exact same spot So then you can see that they're all they're all at the same spot. And then just go back and make sure that your stones are that the spacing is the same between all of them. And then if need be, you know, flip it upside down again and push any of them down that that need it. Another thing to keep in mind is that not every rhinestone is the exact same size. They do have a sizing tolerance. So for SS16, the size is 3.8 to 4 millimeters. So each stone can have a variance in the size. So when you're doing the honeycomb pattern, this you'll you'll see this more um because you'll start to notice that your your stones aren't exactly this the same size and that's what can cause you to start having like lines that aren't straight and that they end up kind of going like roller coaster ish so now that i have that part done i'm gonna just go ahead and apply um, more glue around my edge and then finish this whole top row and give it some time to dry before I start on the second row. So then let me zoom in here a little bit so that you can see a little bit better. And actually, I'm sorry, I need to take this part of the glue off because I wasn't thinking about we're doing the swirl along the cup. So I need to leave a gap right here. And since I took the glue off, I'm just going to use a little bit more alcohol and make sure that I clean that off enough. So now that I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and let this set for a few minutes so that that glue sets in place and that will prevent my stones from shifting as I move on to the rest of the cup. So I'm just going to leave it like that um, for a couple minutes. Okay, now that I've let that dry, I'm going to continue on with the honeycomb pattern, but now because I'm trying to make this go diagonal around the cup, my first stone that I place on this row has to be one over here and one less on this side. So you gotta like shift it one over so that then your lines are still look like that. And with the honeycomb, you're just trying to put it, to put the next row of stones right into the little crevice, the little notches from the prior row.
Then after you work that section of glue, just go back and check your stones and make sure that they're all in the right spacing and that your line is lining up and that all of the stones are staying straight. And then just go back again and check that each stone is in the right space and that you're keeping your line straight. So sometimes too, when you're looking at it like directly on, it looks like it's not straight, but really it is. So I will turn the cup this way and look at it from this direction because not only should my lines be straight this way, but they should also be straight going this way. And the farther we get up, you'll see that. So now I'm just gonna keep doing additional rows in each row. I'm gonna add one more here and one less here. So now we're at that point where I made one of those lines to make sure that I'm keeping everything straight. So pretty much my glue is going to go, it's going to line up to be pretty much right along that same line. So now that we got a couple rows done, you can see now that not only do you want to make sure that the line is straight here, but that your rows this way, diagonally, in both directions that they're straight. So a good way to check that is from the, the tables on the top of your rhinestone. So the table is the flat part of the stone. When you use your pickup tool to pick up, the stones, that's what you're picking it up with, is the table. So you're making sure that you're lining up the tables this direction, this direction, and this direction. So if you start to notice that maybe your line is a little off, a good way to catch the stone that caused that to happen is to look at it in different directions. And if you see one that's kind of out of line in one direction, that's the one that you need to go look at. Um, and you can use you can use tweezers and pick it back out um, before the glue completely dries. So it's always a good idea to check, to do this check like every couple of rows so that that glue is not completely dry and you can make changes as you're going um, if needed. Okay, so now that we have the honeycomb pattern done around the whole cup with our space in the middle left open, I'm going to go ahead and clean this section with alcohol again, just, just to get off any oils, any of the glue that may have gotten there by accident. And now that we have this cleaned off, we're going to go ahead and place the spots for the leopard spots. Um, so this was a wrap for a 16 ounce decal that we sell on our website, blingyourthings.com. Um, I am just going to take off some of the spots and then I'm going to put them on the cup where I want them. 
So I'm just going to randomly place these. I don't like to place the spots very close to the top. I like to give myself a little bit of space so that I have room to play with my stones and get my spacing right up here. So I'm just going to take a couple of these and place them throughout the cup. And then just rub them down with your finger, make sure that they're securely fastened, and then proceed to do that for the rest of your little spiral here. So one thing that you could also do if you don't have vinyl is you could also use um, paint pens. I have these Thule Art acrylic paint pens. I think my aunt gave these to me. She paints rocks. Um, she has rock painting and then she hides them. So you could use the paint pens. Um, you could use these to color your design. If you don't have vinyl or you don't want to use vinyl, you could use these to color your design. You could write out somebody's name. You could do other designs that you wanted to do as well. Um, so these are also handy. Then another thing that's also helpful before you put um, the rind, before you put the glue and the rhinestones on the spots, maybe you have some colors that you're wanting to test out and you're not exactly sure what it will look like. One of the things that you can do is kind of just test. You can test your placement. So like here, I'm going to use Jet and Sapphire. So I just laid down a couple to kind of see what it's going to look like. Am I going to like the placement? Do I like the color pattern together? Um, if you have colors that you're testing, you're not sure what they're going to look like, I highly recommend that you practice your designs um, just so that you don't get the glue on the tumbler and then you put the stones on and you realize that you don't like it. You can see before you do all of that what it's going to look like. So then we'll just go ahead and get started on this. I'm just going to apply glue just like I did before, not a whole lot, to the decal. And then I'm going to use on the black part the Jets in SS16 and SS10. This vinyl that I used, you can use um, just regular glossy vinyl. I did use a glitter vinyl. I believe that's the Caesar. Oh, I forget what it is. I know it's the Caesar brand. Caesar PSV is what it is. Caesar, um, no, it's the Caesar glitter. Let me zoom in so you can see. So with this, I'm just trying to do like an outline, but there's no real pattern to it. I'm doing kind of just like a scatter. Just putting the stones where they look like that they're going to fit best. So the next I'm just going to fill in this little spots right here with a little bit of glue to apply the sapphire stones to.
So these two are just random. You can put them in whatever order you want. Whatever design creation you want to come up with. Now that I have all the pieces done, I will start going back and filling in the rest of the honeycomb section. And then I'll, I'll just do the same thing. Do straight lines all the way across. But then when I get to the parts where the lines meet, I'm going to use some filler stones. And I actually have a multi-size pack that I'm going to use. The multi-size pack has... Um, six sizes that is SS4, 6, 8, 10, and 12, and then I'll just use the smaller pieces to fill in where the stones meet up. So in the spots where the stone meets up and the lines don't match, I'm just using the smallest stone possible to try to put that stone in there to make a place a, like a place marker for to keep a stone there for for that line. And I'll just continue that in each section where the line meets up with my leopard patterns. So then you just complete this process down the whole rest of the cup trying to connect your lines together. Then we will go ahead and wrap up the video. If you haven't already, we'd appreciate it if you can like this video as well as subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. We will also post links to all the products used in the video today in the description down below. If you have a project you would like to see us do or you have questions on, go ahead and leave us a comment as well or reach out to us at info at Until next time, I hope you all have an amazing week. See you then.